and we will just uh, start talking about something really uh, important for business. You know, in our line of business here at Community CPA, and we hear clients having issues, right? They they get they get work comp audit, then they come to us, hey, can you help us to get this audit done? So there's issues, there are there things need to be done in uh, in around insurance, workers comp being one of them, right? So today what we are going to do is we're just tell you what are the important things you need to know. We obviously not licensed to sell workers comp insurance to you. And so you need to go to insurance agent to do that or insurance company to do that, right? But we give you our point of view from where we are sitting with all these clients come to us and here and there, we know the issues that workers come get involved and we just share that experience with you. I think it's really, really helpful because it's a business, uh, it's a real hands-on business experience for work come related issues. And we always, before our webinar, we tell people that please do not um, piecemeal your knowledge by here, they say this, he say that, and you're never gonna get into the real good picture of it. You want to take the responsibility and learn piecemeal, that's okay. But when you really get down to your own cases and you want to make sure you study it, not only you study it, if you don't have time, hire professional people to do that for you. Take all of our advice on webinars with grain of salt, so important. Okay, workers' comp insurance. So workers' comp um, or the, the compens workers' compensation or workers' comp is a form of no fault insurance policy. What does that mean? That means it's, it doesn't really matter who caused it. As long as you are insured, you will be taken care of. That covers the medical bills, the lost wages of an employee okay, that got injured while working. So you might say that, well, you know, really? But what if I got injured in my lunchroom and I was eating my lunch? You know what, there are cases out there, people who actually got into accident uh, injury because they're shaking, the, they're shaking the, the vending machine in the lunchroom, then they broke their hip. And that's also covered on the workers' comp. So it is, it is a, it is a insurance coverage that for the loss of work and the wages for employees. So it's a protection to employee. Most states require employer, regard, uh, regardless of the size of the business, to purchase work comp insurance for their employees. So this is, you know, here it says that most of the states. That tells you that workers' comp is administrated by the state. So every state is a little different. I'll cover three states in, in, in the next few slides. I'll cover Iowa, Minnesota, and California. Those are places we have branches. That's why I'm covering those. And in most states, um, most, uh, most the states uh, has the rule a little different. So that's why you want to know where you are, study your particular state, okay? The requirements, limits, amount of compensation, all of those specifics are determined by the uh, uh, statutes in place in each state. That just tells you it is state driven. And works comp insurance covers the following things, okay? Medical, ex uh, medical expense, lost wages, and ongoing care cost if that is ever result into that funeral expense. So workers comp is really for the unfortunate job injured folks to get those benefit. And workers comp insurance and what does not cover and you you know you know we know that covers this and that when injury are considered to fall outside of the scope of employment. Okay, let's see what they are. Commuting to and from work, that is not covered. So you drive and got into accident on your way to work, mm -mm, that is not covered. But what if you drive between your work stations? 
say you have to work you you're stationed in 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 one state you have to drive to another state to work and that would not considered to be a commuting to and from work to and from work is from your house so that would consider the work okay and recreational activities recreational activities more like exercising and gym time okay you work and uh, got so bored and you go to at lunchtime instead of taking a lunch break you went to ymca and do a couple do a couple of weightlifting and then you got injured your back that is not a work comp uh um, it's outside of that scope and intoxications or substance abuse substance abuse alcoholics drug addicted and those are you know you say i'm too stressed out at work so i start drinking does work comp covers that no but what would cover that your medical insurance okay and uh, you know your medical insurance would offer your mental illness consultation if you really just so stressed out you start smoke you start to drink that's where you go for help but that not workers come right exception might apply depends on the limit of coverage of course there are exceptions and i just give you example of the gentleman and who is in the lunchroom and they're taking lunch break but the lunchroom has a vending machine so his quarter stuck in there so he starts shaking the vending machine then broke his own hip and that went to court is actually awarded with compensation so workers come worked in that case so Whenever in doubt, you can always ask professionals, ask attorney to see whether those would be covered by the workers comp, right? Cost of workers comp insurance. This is what workers comp is not something the employee would pay for. It is always employer, the bosses, the owner's expense for business. So if you are a small business owner and you know it is so much to your benefit to buy that workers comp just in case your worker got injured, then you don't become liable personally for the well-being of the other person, right? So but let's talk about the cost of workers come. And I can never really give you a quote because I'm literally don't have the system to quote you. And I also are not licensed to sell insurance. So, but what we give you is for you to understand what's all included, okay? Workers come premium depends on the nature of your business, the job your employees perform and number of hours they work, you see? It depends on your business. If you're a CPA firm, that's different from drywalling to putting up drywall kind of company. And if you're uh, if your employee and doing desk work is different from the one who are climbing high and to do the roofing, right? And if your employee works four hours a day, that's different from you have to in during the season they work eighteen hours a day. So it all depends on that. And each job type is assigned to a classification code. And the classification code is really important. Let's say you know, for example, in a CPA firm kind of setting, and you would have two classes in general. One of the classes will be the one that travels a lot. The other classes is the one that doesn't travel, they just work from home or work from the office. You may say that what kind of job would travel a slot in the CPA firm? The auditors. The auditors who run around to the different company in the field work, they travel a lot, right? So those are two different classifications. The travels a lot and it had a different rate than the one who works at home. Same thing in construction company. You may have people that who does high, you know, goes on the roof. And you also have people who work on the garden. You also have people who do the office work and only doing payroll. But those three kind of people are having different classifications their rate is different okay riskier work is classified and assigned a higher premium obviously the riskier the injury is the ratio is more so then you pay more so that's why you know you cannot compare the clerical work at community cpa the front desk to the ones who are um maybe even pay the same but they climb the roof and go high the workers comp need to be higher on the ones with a lot of risk so cost of workers come and the formula is 
uh, the premium, the premium is the amount you pay, right? At the at a quarterly or annually, you pay the total premium to workers comp based on your payroll, right? So your payroll times classification rate, this is the rate I was talking about, an experience modifier. And if you have, if this particular class code has a lot of injuries, and then that modifier will times will make you premium bigger. So for example, you might pay 48 cents in premiums for every $100 in payroll that goes to a clerk in the retail store. So I am a salesperson, sales associate on the floor. And for every $100 payroll I'm getting from my company, from the company, and the company only pay 48 cents on workers comp. So maybe, you know, I am in retail store, so I could be tripping uh, on the floor and uh, injure my leg. Then workers come will pay my injuries, but my company only pour, pay 48 cents per, per hundred dollars, right? So if you have a million dollars on payroll, then your 48 cents become uh, 4,800, right? So that's kind of how you work this out. Uh, 48,000, I mean, my math is no good. Now you have a recording to prove that. Okay, then truck driver's premium, that is $9 per $100 payroll. You know, this amount that we give you, it's just actually based on one state. Every state is different. And then, of course, we haven't even considered the modifier yet. We're just considered the class rate, right? The classification of job type is really important to get more accurate premium. So if you have a worker and you hired him as a, say, um, a inspector, for example, he just go on to inspect. He doesn't climb high. He doesn't go down deep. So, so his classification rate is, is lower than the one that who climb high. But then you short of worker and you go, oh, can you just do that job from now on for a couple of months? See, you change his job. So when you apply for workers comp, you need to consider this person's job got changed. You want to change his calculation on classification. And I'll say this, it's not that I don't care about your money and I want you to pay more and you know to the insurance, no, because I care about your money. So I want you to remember those people who went high, before they go high, you want to get that workers comp already updated because you don't want workers comp come back and goes, this person was never insured. So it's not included. Then you end up with the injured person with all the costs that you have to pay personally if you are a good person, or if you have money. If you don't, you could very well go bankrupt because you don't have money to supply that person. What if they're permanently damaged? Are you gonna carry this person for your lifetime? It is going to be very scary. You don't want to go there, okay? Now, the formula, payroll $100 times classification rate times experience modifier equals to premium. So these, the four big mistakes, when you buy workers comp and you are making it, and I'll tell you, I'll give you real life examples on every one of these ones. So for example, underestimating or overestimating payroll. Why would people do that? Because workers comp, they calculate your premium based on the payroll data they have. So let's say if you have up and down year, for example, 2019, we were really working very well. Everybody's making money. 2020 come, they said, oh, shut down. You don't even have an employee anymore, but you are still paying workers come of a huge premium because you forgot to call the agent, tell them that, hey, I don't have any more workers. Please stop my workers come charges. And you didn't do that, right? So. Or of course you could make you could make that claim later, get refunded. The problem is that you your cash flow is already gone out. Okay. And or worse, some people don't even bother with work um, the work comps letter and they don't even care. And they're supposed to get refund back and they just ignore it. They think that, whoa, well, well, I already paid, so why would I bother? No, you want to, because if your payroll went down, you're supposed to pay less, you're supposed to get money back from the money you already paid, okay? So that's number one cost of you 
and overpaying the insurance or underpaying the insurance. And the proof number two, proof of workers' comp insurance for subcontractors. So when you have subcontractor working for you, they're not your employee, understand? You want them to give you the proof of workers' comp. Why? Because when they get injured, they will tell you that, you know, I work just, I work for you. I only work for you. And I'm your employee by default, even though you didn't pay me like employee. They will win the case, okay? There are too many of those ones winning the case. So you have to have workers' comp insurance for subcontractors or you buy workers' comp for them. Okay, so that is number two. Number three, poor workers' comp claims management result in higher experience modifier. What does that mean? That means that when you have a claim, you just let it go. You are like, ah, oh, too much trouble. Uh, don't want to hire attorney. Ah, oh, CPA is useless. I'm just going to do it myself. You know, what can I do? Oh, well, you know, maybe he's injured here. Maybe not. I don't know. And uh, you're just not taking a proactive approach to handle your cases. If you have a poor management style and you don't care about those claims, you let the claim dive into your uh, policy, you will have a huge modifier you will have three, four times of premium. You, you know, other people would not pay that, but you do because you have high claims. So you really want, you know, you know, my position is that, you know, I'm of course also a business owner and I also take care of so many business owners. And I also take care of so many employees of those business owners, right? And you know what we wanted is, we want our business owner to pay the most accurate workers' compensation premiums possible. And we want the employees of our business owners to get the maximum benefit they can get out of the insurance. So these two goals are, they're not conflict of each other. They're actually working really well together if you manage your insurance properly. Right. So making sure that you classify your worker properly so they receive the correct classification code and make sure you report your payroll timely so you don't over underpay your premium. And when you get audited every year, make sure it's done professionally so you can get refund back if you overpaid. If you underpaid, you can pay it in so everybody's claim can be taken care of. You might think that, oh, well, what's the point to pay the past premium because nobody claimed anything yet. So it looks like I'm okay last year. You never know. Sometimes the worker's injury didn't come right away. Maybe, so one of the cases is that the, um, the, the, the person who actually bending down to catch something and hear the pop in their in their neck, in, in, maybe it's her, I don't remember the gender in the neck. And it didn't really become a thing for this person until a couple months later, it become an issue. So then they filed workers come. Can you imagine this couple of months? It is um, the audit period and you just decided that, oh, well, you know, nobody got injured, I'm okay. I'm just gonna, you know, not pay the premium or do something invalidate your 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 policy then this worker come to claim what you're going to do right so make sure that you manage your insurance the last one the number four is also a very big one it is what i call the mathematical verification there's no science to it and you get your workers comp calculation i want you to verify the premium calculation to see whether they are right, I'll tell you that we we are doing the uh, we are doing the the work for our um, for our client. There was one client had the workers' comp uh, audit, 
So they pay, they pay about several thousand a year and the audit come is asking only three, $400 extra. It's not a lot. And, but when we reviewed their premium calculation, we realized that they are double counting workers. So on one section, they listed business owner because they're exempted. They don't want workers comp. But in the employee session, they list the owner again. So we went back to workers comp auditor and tell them that, hey, you know, just do a little better job. You know, these are owners. They already said that they don't want workers comp. Why are you adding them into the employee? And they get paid a lot more. So their premium is a lot higher. So as a result, we're getting over a thousand dollar refund. So you really just need to make sure that you verify those paper. They look so legit. They look so official, so authoritative. They make you feel like there's no way they're going to have a mistake. I will tell you that I have not seen one without mistake. So how about that? That gives you a reason why you need to take responsibility of your own insurance policy. All right. Now, let's quickly cover three states. In Iowa, Iowa business owners can compare quotes, purchase a policy from private insurance company, okay? And if they're un unable to get insurance from the standard market insurers, normally everybody, doesn't matter which state you are, you can get that from standard market insurers. But for reasons, maybe you don't, you're high risk. Then in Iowa, you can join this Iowa assigned risk pool. And it's, it's done by NCCI, stands for National Council on Compensation Insurance. You can get that as your last resort. And Iowa also have this self-insured of a compensation claims, like you put some money aside. If your worker got injured, you pay that yourself. I would never recommend that for our small business owners. Don't go there. Only large business has a benefit to do that. But for us, you just go to standard market insurers, go to your agent, get the insurance, okay? And so that's kind of Iowa. The other things about Iowa is that if you uh, fail to maintain workers' comp, and the penalty I want you to know that is up to if if you, you fail to do that and your worker got injured, the award to the worker, it is 50% more than what they would get. So it is a double, it is going to double your claim. So you want to double the amount you pay out. So you want to really be careful. And if you don't have the workers come, you're literally again, you're literally operating illegally. You have civil injections with um, injunctions, which is actually um, is a demeanor. Is a is a is actually getting on your record as business owner, and you don't uh, you don't uh, obtain that insurance. And the revocation of insurance and self insurance privilege, they don't allow you to do that anymore. Um, you know. So the, these are just the penalties they're talking about. What about in California? In California, and you can also buy that on the market, employer must purchase workers' comp insurance from either a licensed insurance company or through state compensation insurance fund. So they give you the option, okay? And of course you can, you have the self-insured option, but that is very difficult for a small business to get to. And if you don't do that, there is a charges, a sum of $1,500 per employee employed during the period of the employer was uninsured. So there is a penalty to it. Just don't go there and you should have workers come, okay? Um, so that is California. In Minnesota, Minnesota actually has the highest penalty for that. So you can you can buy on the open market, but you the workers company insurance in Minnesota, you can purchase through insurance agent or directly from the insurance company. And uh, here, the penalty is big because they are, look at this, the employer may be ordered to provide the necessary insurance coverage to refrain from employing any person at any time without insuring employee to pay penalty of up to 1,000 per employee per week during the time employee was not insured. 
don't go there. So big penalty. So you want to uh, understand that workers come as necessity and you can get them from your insurance agent and then making sure that when you got the insurance, you're gonna look at the, you're gonna look at the classification code and then look at the, your number of employees, your payrolls. And when you get audited every year, do that carefully, do that carefully, save money. And I just want you to hear me and to do that and tell me how much money you save. So I have one, uh, uh, one business owner and she always does her workers' comp insurance herself. There was one year she came back and she said that I always do it myself. I didn't even know what to look at. So I always agree with what they say. Yin, can you look at that for us? So I had our staff look at it and the classification were wrong and the things were just not really done based on what her needs is. So even though we didn't save a whole bunch of money for her, but we changed a lot of classifications to make it right. So when that person really get injured and you will be able to pay that person. Otherwise, there could be argument on how you insured them. You never paid premium to this kind of work, so they won't get the insurance. All right, and I really hope that you enjoy our webinar and enjoy my Chinglish webinar because it's getting really popular. I will see you again. Bye-bye.